Hello and welcome educators to Strategy Sundays, right here with Strategic Educational Consultancy Services, where we plan ahead for the week. Strategy Sundays is an enhanced method that you can use as educators, especially during this new normal, to plan your week ahead. As we all know, teaching begins on Monday. And as a result of the work we're beginning on Monday, you will need to plan ahead of time what to be accomplished for the week. How do you plan for the week? One, you jot down your ideas. What is the content that you will be teaching for the week? What are the topics? What are the objectives? What will you use to help you to accomplish these objectives? Is it an activity? Is it a test? Is it a quiz? Is it a project? What online platform will you be using? Are you going to be using WhatsApp, Zoom, Google Classroom? What are you going to use to enhance your lesson? Will you have YouTube videos? Will you use Kahoot or Edpuzzle? Whatever it is that you will be using, you need to be planning ahead, knowing exactly where to find your resources, where to find your content, having everything laid out. This will help you to approach the work week with much strength and also to help you to flow through the work week seamlessly. The second tip that I would like to share with you, as you meet your students for the new term, whether your term begins tomorrow, January 4th, or next week, January 11th, Whichever time it is, you must ensure that you are bonding with your students, especially on the first day of class. So you check in with your students. You may want to find out how were the holidays? What is it that they did that was fun? You may want to share little bits and pieces of your holiday with your students. It doesn't matter but just checking in with them. That social interaction will help them to understand that as their teacher, you understand where they are and the context from which they are operating. Maybe it could be a teachable moment where you'll be able to re-emphasize the COVID protocols, where you may be able to re-emphasize simple matters of how do you socialize at the dining table? What are the things that you do or don't do? This could be a teachable moment for you in your class. Do not miss it. The second thing that you would like to do is to ensure that you give assignments. Now, educators, you may be saying assignments. Remember, Assignments doesn't always mean that you have to grade your assignments. It could be a concept that the child may have to read over. It could be some new terms that you're going to be using during the week or during the term and you want them to read ahead. It could be a video that explains a concept better than how you would have explained it to them. Whatever it is that you're going to be doing, an assignment would be great for your students because it also puts them in the mind to work, to understand that, listen, miss or sir comes with the information and teacher is ready to give whatever it is that I need to understand. So never ever overestimate the need of a simple assignment. You don't always have to mark your assignments. Another key tip that I would like to share with you as well is to use the week to reflect. As an excellent educator, you need to be a reflective practitioner. You would have reflect at the end of the term, what are the things that you did that were right? Did my students learn everything that they needed to? How was the assignment? Did they get a good grade? What could I have done better to help them to understand this objective? or to understand this concept. And so because you are reflective, you're going to be taking over that reflective practice to your students as well. How do you help your students to be reflective? Simply saying to them, showing them where they have gone wrong on a piece of assignment, what they should have done in the test, what should the answer be? How can they be able to differentiate a concept or differentiate a term. You're going through and showing them along the way what they have done wrong and how they could have made it better. Educators, this could also be the time in which 
for those of you who practice master learning to say to the students, I'm giving you an opportunity to get a better grade. By giving the child an opportunity to get a better grade, it doesn't mean that you're going to be giving them the same assignment. You could pull aspects of that assignment, add another aspect to it. You could put in something else. You could give them an, an alternative to what you gave them before. But you're giving your students the opportunity to master the concept, to master the content. And by doing that, it helps them to be able to do better. No, this will also get your students in the frame of mind to be able to have a clear understanding of where you are going. So once you begin the term and you begin teaching, you don't need to go back to last term to say, oh, you did not get this right. Because right there and then in the first week of teaching, all those misconceptions, all those misunderstandings, all those incorrect assignments would have been clarified. This is an important part of brain-based learning because it gets you to help the students to process the information in their brain so they have a clearer picture of where they're going and it helps them to store and retrieve the information much better. Finally, what are the benefits of strategizing? Yes, strategizing helps you, the educator, to flow through the work week seamlessly. Even if you did not get to complete an objective, you know that this objective must be done in the following week. Another thing that it helps to do, not only does it help you, but it also helps your student to be able to understand that the teacher is organized and hence I need to be organized. They will always understand where you are taking them and they will do their best. Listen up. This is Strategy Sundays. Meet us next week when we do this one more time looking at tips for your work week.